Good, good morning somewhere in America, and this is your host, Will Moore. And the reason why I'm looking guys down at you is because I am actually preparing my camera. It is it's about 6.15 in the morning, and in my last podcast, I showed you guys how I edit HDR. Today, I'm going to show you how I actually shoot landscapes in HDR. Stay tuned. Okay guys, so I'm out here and I'm going to show you guys what I what I'm getting ready to do. So hold tight for a second here. Okay, it's probably kind of dark but you see these guys this is what I'm getting ready to do right here the Sun is just coming up I'm right here at the golden hour um, I got my settings I'm gonna be bracketing these shots and I got my uh, shutter at 1 40th of a second I'm just shooting at f11 and my ISO is at uh, I'm gonna take my ISO down to a hundred and I'm, I, I'm actually on a tripod guys so as you can see I'm shooting with my a6000 so I'm gonna go ahead and bracket my shots and um, I think I got a good composition right here. I got some pretty good, uh, this, these, these trees right here, leading line, um, this, this grass line here is pretty good. And I'm gonna go ahead and get it because that sun is coming up really fast and I wanna get some really, really nice shots. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna just uh, set, already set my camera. Okay, hey guys, how you doing? So I'm in my studio real quick and I want to go ahead and actually uh, process this in a very, very quick, rough way. Um, if you guys are actually shooting uh, HDR, you guys will actually have more time to really develop this. But I just want to do a quick tutorial on it. You guys saw how I was shooting out there. I was on a tripod at 1 40th of a second. Um, I thought I was, I thought I was going to shoot... Um, take my ISO down to 100 I actually did it at 160 um, which is really good uh, it's on a it's on a tripod so there's no shake all I had to do was go ahead and do my bracketed shots and um, and you saw what I was talking about how I use the the uh, those tree stumps and the grass line as a leading line into this okay so I have all I have I did it three times I usually just do three images but I actually have six images here so I'm gonna click on one and uh, I'm going to show you what's going to happen. I'm going to hold down shift and click on the other. I'm going to right click. I'm going to export over to Photomatix Pro. And I'm going to use Photomatix Pro today um, instead of just using the raw file um, inside of Lightroom. And I'll probably do some, I'll do some uh, retouching when I come back to Lightroom. Okay, it's going to align images. I got handheld checked on. Uh, even though I had it on a tripod, but I like to keep handheld so that way I know for a fact that it's going to do exactly uh, make sure that everything is lined up really, really well. Okay, automatically import into Light um, into Lightroom library, and uh, I'm using 8-bit. So um, let me go ahead and export, and it's going to take it right over to Photomatix, and I'll pause while it's doing all of that. Okay, guys. I am here in Photomatix and this is my image that has already come in. Now the reason why it's looking like this and I like what I'm seeing right here is because I had already actually did um, some processing with this at first. But I'm looking over here at some of my presets and I'm kind of digging what I'm seeing here like Autumn Optimizer. Let's see what we got right here. See I like that right there. Look at that mood. That actually looks pretty much what I saw this morning. Let's go to 2 go to three it's getting darker in the foreground but you know what actually two is actually going to work for me now I like presets because what it does is that it helps you to get um, to get a jump or get started you know and that's you know pretty much that's what I like uh, and then I can go ahead and work from here now the strength is at 50 maybe if I pull the strength up a little bit that bring that brightens up the foreground a little bit more that right there is great my uh, tone compression uh, let's bring that up just a little bit uh, let's bring that down right there my lighting effect 
uh, is down at zero. Let me bring up my lighting just a little bit. Nope, see, that's starting to get that little HDR, that that look that I want it to look HDR, but I don't want it to look overly developed. Okay, so just a little bit. Make it to one. Just one. One is fine. Uh, my whites are fine. Um, my blacks. Um, yeah, if I bring all my black blacks all the way up, it gets started, gets a little a little darker in the foreground. I uh, don't want that too much. Uh, my midtones. That's that's pretty good right about there. Uh, the saturation. I don't want it to be too overly saturated. The color temperature is just perfect. Let me take that down just a little bit right there. Okay. All right. So I like what I'm seeing. This is a good HDR image. It's not overly developed. It's not jacked up like I told you guys. Like I've always said that you know HDR is a love or hate thing. You either love it or you hate it. And the reason why a lot of photographers hate it is because a lot of times they see HDR done very badly. The sky is overdeveloped. It looks raggedy. It looks horrible. So I don't want my image looking like that. So I like what I see this um, that I've seen right here. This is pretty much what I saw this morning. I'm going to save and re-import this into Lightroom. And I'll go ahead and do some last minute retouches. And guys, guess what? I am done with this image. Now, one of the things that I always tell people when I used to teach art um, at the college, I used to always say when I was teaching painting, don't don't do the three P's: pitter, patter, putter. Okay, when it's done, guys, it's done. Be done with it and get out. All right. High dynamic range is exactly what it is, what it says it is. It's just supposed to pull out some of the dynamic range of your blacks, of your uh, of your your whites, and of your midtones. Okay. So now I'm back into uh, Lightroom with my image now let me show you something you notice that you don't see it showing up here if you go up to photo go down to the live photo library there's your image right there and hit develop and here it is right there and we're ready to go great image okay so let me go ahead and align this uh, horizon I'm gonna go ahead and take my angle tool and I'm gonna go right about here uh, let's try it again uh, no, I don't want to do that let's go back back to import okay and let me go down here to my angle tool and I did nothing let me straighten it up this way there we go all right let me click tick okay now that that's looking pretty good right there now what I want to do is I kind of want to lighten up this foreground just a little bit let me go ahead and um, Go ahead, grab a graduated filter, and I'm gonna go right up here, just about here. Uh, let's take this temperature off. I want to go to exposure, all right, and just open it up just a little bit. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful right there. Let me pull that down, and let me bring this up just about right here. Beautiful, and let me add a little bit more. A little bit more sun right here and a little on the tent I'll go to the left a little bit more green okay I like that because it's been raining so much around here it's so green it is so green let me go to new I'm gonna go graduate another graduated filter and um, let me go ahead and bring that down just a little bit right here and I don't want that sky looking like that so I'm gonna go to exposure again just a little bit of the contrast and maybe a little bit of tint on the temperature a little bit of the blue there we go okay I like that Let me grab a brush because I want to bring up some of the lightness over here so I'm gonna go ahead and want to do that guys I'm sorry about that let me go back to my colors and the there we go all righty and I'm gonna go ahead and hold down the alt key reduce this just a little bit and bring out some of the lightness of the towers over here and maybe even somewhere the clouds are right there and 
little bit there, a little bit here. And generally when you do this, instead of doing this like in Lightroom, I would like, I would generally have an, an ND filter. And let's bring out some of that sun. There we go. Okay, I'm liking what I'm seeing, guys. That looks really good. Let me do something real quick. Let me um, go down to lens and remove chromatic aberration, enable uh, profile correction. And then I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna go to color priority. And I'm gonna go to the left. Just bring just a little vignetting, just a little vignetting. And that's about it. Grab a brush. And I'm gonna go to exposure, just a little exposure, and kind of bring out, to kind of lead you into this, kind of bring out some of that light right about there. And the foreground, just a little bit. Bring out some more light. Take that down just a little bit. Oh, wow, I like that, I like that area. Let me go up here. Add a little light just up here where the horizon is. Okay. And let me grab another brush. I'm going to grab a new one. This time I am going to go to temperature. Okay, guys. And I like what I'm seeing. This is our before. Before and after. Before and after. And if you notice what I did, all I did was just all I did was just just bring out just a little bit, not too much. Then getting back there. Yeah, just like that. Okay, that's all I did, guys, which is bring out just a little bit. That's before, and that's the after. Hey, guys, hope you enjoyed me shooting this morning. I got up early this morning. I, th I said I didn't want to miss it. I saw it yesterday. It was a little more dramatic. I said I want to get up this morning and shoot. So, hey, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, now, back to me. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this this morning. It was real quick. When you're um, shooting before the golden hour, um, it's always good to know exactly uh, what time is going to happen and when it's going to um, when you're actually going to get that 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 nice sun and those nice clouds uh, just peeking over those mountains or the field or whatever you're shooting uh, during the golden hour whether it's early in the morning or um, or the late in the afternoon when the sun is just going down you always want to arrive there maybe about a half an hour to maybe an hour early because you never know what's going to happen especially you want to get there when nobody's there and that it's all clear and there's no people around and there's no obstructions anything like that so i got up early this morning and i rushed over there because i knew where the sun comes up right over where those those towers are i knew that it was going to be a great morning i Number one, I checked my weather. Always check your weather, okay? And I knew that I was gonna have some good good clouds that's this morning. Um, I also knew that um, um, what time the sun was coming up. And I use uh, um, an app called Xstate. And Xstate is really good because what it does is that it allows you to know exactly when the golden hour is. Um, also use Sun Surveyor because that tells me exactly where the sun is going to be at that particular hour and time. So it's always great um, to have those apps on your phone and to be able to get out there and have an exact. Also too, I always go out and uh, research the area that I'm going to be shooting at before I actually go and shoot there so that I know. I don't get out of, I don't get out of a lot to do a lot of landscape photography. But when I do, I love it because it's great, it's nature, I'm there by myself and I get a chance to really enjoy it. So and other than that guys, hey, um, I'll talk with you later. God bless you guys. If you can't say anything nice or do anything nice for anybody, you know what I always say, stick a shoe in your mouth and do what? Keep it moving. Talk with y'all later, bye-bye.